Born June 1st, 1926 as Norma Jean Mortensen in Los Angeles. Marilyn Monroe's life between all the alleged romances and affairs and a supposed depression at the end of it can only be described as controversial. So it is only befitting that her death is shrouded in mystery. This is the series where I tell you a story, its subsequent theories and explanations, and then I let you make up your mind. Today will be a serious one, no pun intended, because death is not a laughing matter, especially when so much doubt surrounds its circumstances. Let's study the situation involving the death of this icon in depth. Noticing her bedroom light was still on, Marilyn's housekeeper Eunice Murray knocked on the door a few times, however, she did not get an answer. At 3 a.m., a worried Murray called Dr. Ralph Greenson, Marilyn's psychiatrist. After failing to enter the room the conventional way, he broke down the window when seeing her lying on the bed. He checked for a pulse. In the early hours of August 5th, 1962, movie star Marilyn Monroe was pronounced dead at the scene. At 4.30 a.m., about one and a half hours later, the police was finally called. Upon arrival, they questioned Greenson and another doctor there. They inspected the room and found empty pill bottles on her nightstand. Yet oddly, no glass or cup of water was found. Greenson estimated that Marilyn passed away around 12.30, while Undertaker Guy Hawker put it between 9.30 and 11.30 p.m. the previous night. Dr. Thomas Noguchi conducted the autopsy and concluded that Monroe had died of a sedative drug overdose, possibly to commit suicide. A quick and ultimately suspicious investigation left many questions unanswered. Why, for instance, took it so long to call the police? Then there was the report that Greenson called an ambulance but then turned it away when he realized she was dead. And how did a drinking glass turn up after the police search? Jack Clemens was the first policeman on the scene and he stated it was the most obvious staged death scene I had ever seen. Let's talk about the most obvious causes of death before going any further. The lesser belief theory is that Marilyn Monroe, after allegedly suffering from a psychiatric disturbance for a long time and being depressed the last few weeks, committed suicide. The coroner also stated she had been rescued from suicide attempts at several occasions. Although not everybody is so sure about this. It was all just a tragic accident. She had overdosed many times before her ultimate death, so it was deemed by some as an accidental overdose. The most popular theory, believed by many a conspiracy theorist, said that she was murdered by lethal injection. This is corroborated by the fact that no pills were found in her stomach during autopsy, and nothing to drink the pills was found in her room. Also, she didn't vomit as is usual with overdoses. In June 1964, author Frank A. Capel published a 70-page booklet, the first casting doubt on the official account of Marilyn's death. In it, he argues that both Monroe and Robert Kennedy were communists, ultimately victim of a vast conspiracy. The Communist Party ordered a lot of murders disguised as suicides, 
heart attacks and accidental deaths, according to Capel. Pulitzer Prize winning novelist Norman Mailer published the book Marilyn, a biography. He believed her to be a revenge killing by either FBI or CIA against the Kennedys for the Pigs Bay fiasco. He also said Marilyn called the White House on the night of her death. He however had no single piece of evidence to back up his claim. The third theory is allegedly based on a non-authenticated report that supposedly circulated among the FBI, thinking she could revive her career by making a suicide attempt. Marilyn called her friend and lawyer, Robert F. Lawford, brother-in-law to Robert Kennedy, whom allegedly had an affair with her and wanted to get rid of her, into help. Lawford then persuaded Dr. Ralph Grinson and Eunice Murray to help orchestrate the attempt. Grinson then prescribed a few bottles of secondal tablets, believing they could be pumped out of the stomach easily. After Marilyn became unconscious, Grinson and Murray waited to call the police until, until Marilyn was dead. Darwin Porter, biographer and travel writer, claims that mob boss Sam Giancana, possibly paid off by one of the Kennedy brothers, ordered a hit on her. Giancana's partner, Johnny Rosselli, after having visited Marilyn, let in five hitmen who sneaked up on her, slipped her a chloroform soaked cloth over her face, undressed her, administered an enema of barbiturates, and then moved her to the bedroom. They left when they heard Eunice Murray enter the house. Peter Lawford later stole a little red diary filled with details about Marilyn's affairs and sex encounters. Journalists J. Margolis and Richard Buskin wrote in their book The Murder of Marilyn Monroe, Case Closed, that Marilyn threatened to stage a public conference and reveal her affairs with Robert and John Kennedy. Robert then told Greeson, who was also having an affair with her, that his reputation would be ruined. Later that evening, Kennedy, along with Greeson, Lawford and two bodyguards, came to Marilyn's house and one of the bodyguards administered a powerful enema, whilst the others looked for her diary. When Eunice Murray and her son Norman Jeffries found Marilyn's naked body, they called an ambulance, and when they arrived, Greeson suddenly appeared on the scene and took over from them, ultimately sending them away. March 25th of 2015, a news story broke out about a retired top-level CIA operative called Norman Hodges. He confessed on his deathbed that between 1959 in 1972, he committed no less than 37 assassinations for the American government, and this included actress and model Marilyn Monroe. Allegedly, she hasn't only slept with, Ken with the Kennedys, but also with Fidel Castro, and that she had to die. Unfortunately, few or no written files exist to corroborate this confession, and all the witnesses who can confirm this are either dead or missing in action presumed that. How is it possible that the death of a single person can generate such controversy, so many conspiracy theories and invoke so many people all over the world to discuss this matter more than 50 years hence? And now I might make even more people ponder about this. But whatever the truth is, you decide. So, did you like the video? You can click the like button. You can leave comments in the box below. Hell, you can start a discussion group in there for all I care. If you haven't already, and you want to see more, you can subscribe to my channel. 
And you can share this on your social media with your friends and people you've never heard of. I have a vlog channel, so if you want to get bored out of your mind for a while, why don't you check it out? And you can follow me on various social medias, all links in the description below. See you next time!